I, this is this is one of the things. A lot of people don't believe in a bench run. Here's what a bench run is. Every model, and this probably goes back many years, every model that I've flown for the first time, I either do it in a driveway or I do it at the field, and I suggest and encourage other people to do it, is run the motor on the ground. Fuel it up, get the needle set, and sit there and just pick the nose up, drop the nose. Pick the nose up, drop the nose. At least one tank of fuel, preferably two or three. That's called a bench run. Then at the end of that, at the end of it, do all the things we talked about. Tighten things. I'll bet you I could name five people that on the first flight refused to bench run it and in the middle of the flight lost, among things, a cowl, a wheel, had a prop come loose, a glow plug come out. Now what happens if you have some dirt in a tank, especially if it's a new tank, here's, your, here's the biggest thing of all. If you have a new tank, almost guaranteed some trash is going to wind up in the filter. And halfway, a minute or two into this run, that motor is going to go dead lean. And if this is a new model, there's a good chance it's a new or relatively new motor. And now you're out at the handle, this motor, this airplane's going 100 miles an hour, and you just have to hang on as you turn your motor into a bunch of french fries. Well, when it's on the ground, you can point the nose down, shut it off, and clean the filter. You can't do that once somebody launches the model. Bench running, such a critical, critical thing. Now, and it would be, no matter, it's almost irrelevant what model it is, profile or whatever. I would, at the end of the bench run, or running it twice, I would take the filter out anyway and back flush it, flush fuel through it backwards, then fuel through it forward and reinstall it. I then check all the bolts, including the prop, check the wheel collars, check that the tip weight box cover isn't coming off and that the variable leadouts aren't sliding back and forth. It's very, very important. We even had one person, and this happened at Brodax, we had a person launching a brand new plane that had never been flown before. And before, just before they let it go, they watched as a flap came off, then an elevator, another elevator, and a flap while they were standing holding the model. Now, this is at a crowded contest, biggest contest in the world. And imagine, just imagine, releasing that model and having the flaps and elevators come off in flight. And the problem was, the person that it happened to forgot to glue the hinges in. They pressed them in, but never went back and glued them in. They were in a rush to get a flight. As, as we all are when we have a new plane, we're all excited about it. So here's the other thing. At the end of a bench run, check everything. Check everything. It's, it goes without saying. There's a million little things that can go wrong from not having the tank shim, the glow plug loose, the engine bolts, the, the, the rudder hinges, things that can go wrong. You know when a model's new, they're going to be much more prone to happening because once you fly a plane a few times and go back and recheck things, you, now you've got the deck really stacked in your favor. But in the very beginning, you don't know what exactly is going to be the problem. So that bench run, very, very critical thing. In fact, somewhere on this video, and maybe maybe we'll put it in right now or a little bit later, I'm going to put a, a few minutes of some of the bench runs we've had. The Testarossa bench run, Joe Adamusco's bench run, the, the bombers when I had the twins, all of the twins. I, I must have run them 15 times on the ground before I ever let them go into the air. Bench running, before flying, an excellent choice.